All right, folks. Thank you. Let's talk a little politics. Like we never talk politics, but let's talk a little politics. The Democrats have a double freakout coming. We'll describe in just a minute. We are graced with Katie Pavlich, townhall.com and Fox News contributor, right on set with me. <laughs> and Charlie Hurt, who doesn't like me and is still in Washington. He's the Washington <laughs> Times opinion editor and Fox News contributor, and he's keeping his distance. All right. Uh, both I would of you. be there for Katie if I got to sit next to her. I'm a lot I, of fun. I, I, came, I came from a sick bed just to be on set with Katie. Are you kidding? <laughs> Sacrifice. Anyway, here's the point. That, yeah. uh, our friend Byron York, okay, distinguished columns, he writes a column, The Democrats Double Freak Out. A, a whole series of new polls show Donald Trump is winning every swing state over Mr. Biden, in a lot of them by a considerable margin. And then B, and I want A to come first. B, it turns out uh, the Democrats' assault, the legal warfare, the lawfare, is not panning out. Jack Smith cannot get off the ground because the Supreme Court is uh, deciding to look at immunity. They probably won't get done with that until the summer. And I doubt if there's somehow going to be a trial on the eve of the election. If they were, it would be really something. Fannie Willis, uh, it looks to me like disqualification or perjury. But what do I know? I'm just suggesting. And uh, Byron says the Dems are just not happy. All right. First, Katie Pavlich. All the swing states going for Joe, uh, going for Donald Trump. Why is this? Why do you reckon? Well, I think it's the basic concept of is your, better, your life better off now than it was four years ago? Typical, right? But, uh, you know, Joe Biden is in a different position now than he was, obviously, during the last campaign. Donald Trump is out there. Don't underestimate the power of unfinished business when it comes to what he wants to do. And we're seeing something that we really haven't seen before in presidential politics. We have a direct comparison between the guy before, the guy in office now, and what people had and what they don't have now as a result of Joe Biden's policies. And also, Joe Biden ran as a moderate. He is not governed in a moderate way. In places like Michigan, you're seeing this revolt among rank-and-file union workers, for example, who are saying this electric car mandate is mm -hmm. absurd. So you're seeing people pull away in places like Michigan. Um, so it's a rematch for the ages, absolutely. Uh, and Donald Trump is the one who's out there with all the energy when the majority of the country doesn't believe that Joe Biden is even capable yeah. of running for a second term, yeah. including Democrats. Uh, Charlie, um, it's interesting. Paul Krugman, you know Paul Krugman. You probably talk to Paul Krugman all mm. the time to get some economic <laughs> and political advice. Oh, so yes. Krugman of the New York we Times... We hang out together at the bar. I figured. <laughs> uh, Krugman in the New York Times uh, writes a column called The Mystery of White Rural Rage. Okay? Now, this is wonderful. Um, Michael Goodwin of the New York Post wrote this terrific column. Uh, the mystery of white rural age. Uh, white rural rage is arguably the single greatest threat facing American democracy, according to Krugman. This has a feel to it of Hillary Clinton's deplorables. Uh, Nikki Haley didn't understand. Stuff like um, the border catastrophe, the lack of law and order, the poor economic performance. As Katie said, you're not better, you're worse off than you were three, four years ago. Um, keeping peace around the world. None of that matters. It's all white rural rage. That's what Krugman said. What do you make of that, Charlie? Well, of course, uh, Paul Krugman is, is a huckster himself, and uh, he doesn't know uh, anything about uh, rural America. Uh, I don't think he would survive very long in rural America if he had to raise his own food or uh, herd cattle or do anything uh, constructive, I think that uh, he, his, he, it would not work out well for him, which is why he works at the New York Times. Um, I, he, you know, he looks around at the wasteland uh, that uh, our political leaders have made of job opportunities in much of rural America, and he, you know, the only statistic he really looks at with all that is, well, I still have a job. I still work for the New York Times, so I don't really care. That's kind of who the New York Times is. That's who Paul Krugman is, and that's fine. But, you know, the problem here, and, and lucky for him, he's not ever running for office because he also wouldn't get elected dog catcher anywhere, uh, even probably in his neighborhood in New York City. But, uh, you know, I, and I think Katie's exactly right, her analysis of all of this. But the problem is that people like Paul Krugman and Democrats have spent so much time belittling Trump supporters and belittling the people who look to Donald Trump for, for real a real response to things, and they have so vilified these people, and they vilify Donald Trump, and their whole strategy yeah. is to put him in jail, yeah. is to bankrupt his family, and meanwhile, Donald Trump is just focused on the issues. 
And as Katie says, anybody who looks at where they were four years ago compared to today, based on the issues, based on the things that actually matter to them, yeah. they're much I, worse I mean, off today. And they realize that, I, that Donald Trump has the answers. These yeah. people don't. I mean, they don't, you know, Trump is winning the white working class. Mm -hmm. He's winning the black African-American yep. working class, winning the Hispanic working folks. Yep. He's winning Asian working folks. They don't understand that. But Can Katie, I just say something real quick about rural America? Because I'm from rural America and I spent a lot of time driving around rural America. They have been attacked for decades. Mm. As Charlie says, their jobs have been shipped overseas. The government spending that their money has made their dollar worthless. Mm -hmm. They've been attacked in terms of their lifestyle. Their food is unaffordable. They have people in Washington, D.C. And, and New York City telling them they have to control how much fuel they use to mm -hmm. making their lifestyle more expensive, what kind of dishwasher they're allowed to have, how much water can come out of their spigot. And then when they dare to push back and vote for someone like Donald Trump, they say that they should be monitored and that there's this threat to democracy through white rage. Uh, you wouldn't be allowed to talk about this, uh, any other group in America like they talk about white rural America. This is it's the really same deplorable mistake. Last minute, Katie, help me out. The other freak out is Jack Smith and the Democrats' lawfare. The clock is running against them. They will not be able to throw Trump in jail for 750 years. The Supreme Court is going to do a careful review of Trump's immunity pledge or immunity uh, defense. What do you make of that? It's not happening. They're not. And of course, the fiasco in Georgia and the fiasco in New York, this lawfare campaign doesn't seem to be working out on time. Well, the lawfare was banking on the timeline of before the election because they really want to get Donald Trump convicted before then. It's falling apart. The systems that they are trying to use that they say they depend on are not working. Yeah. They're not relying on democracy to determine this outcome as they claim they're protecting it. They're trying to use the court system to convict Donald Trump's people vote against him. And it's not really working out in terms of their timeline. Right. I got to jump. Sorry, we're short of time. We're always short of time. But I like the white rural rage. I think this is <laughs> Democrats do not understand why working folks might go for Trump. Katie Pavlich and Charlie Hurt, terrific stuff. Thanks for coming.